Welcome back to The Build Show. I'm Travis Brungard, and I'm here with my partner in crime at Catalyst. Joe Cook. So Joe and I are getting ready to put up the Zip System rain screen, which is going to separate our air and water control from our claddings. Yep. But before we get into all that, let's just start with what is the Zip System? How do we use it on our projects? Well, it's our sheeting products. It's our exterior sheeting. This one happens to be Zip R, so it's also our outside insulation. But what we love so much about it and our framer is they're already used to putting up board sheeting. Yeah. And so by doing this system, we're getting our structural sheeting, we're getting our air and water when we tape the seams, and then we do it one step further. Yeah, then we take it up the wall and transition directly to the roof. And that's something that I think you're gonna see more and more of. We've talked about monopoly framing and perfect wall construction. What we're talking about when we say monopoly framing is that green wall you see up to the top, tapes to the roof sheathing and goes back. We actually use the 5 8 product, which is Sienna rather than green. But then we do a second roof on top of that. And we're gonna explain all that in this episode that's all about continuity of air and water control using the ZIP system. This episode is brought to you by Huber Engineered Woods. Check it out. All right, so when we talk about ZIP system, what we're really talking about is our control layers. And with the integral membrane taped at the seams, sealed around penetrations, we're ready to handle air and water in terms of keeping water out and keeping air from going in and out. Now you see we haven't taped this bottom edge yet. That's a catalyst detail. We like to clean that off ourselves and get that all wrapped up. Uh, it, we use it as an inspection opportunity. But on most jobs, you'd see this already done. What we're talking about then is moving from our continuity of air control at this sill plate detail, which you can see all over our content and other Build Show contributors. Steve has a great detail for that that we've utilized for years. Sealant under the plate, tape the face of this. Now we have air control and water can only go down and away. As we move up the panel then, obviously we're taping around corners and in the field, if you have an overdriven nail, we want to seal that as well. But the gist of this system is that by utilizing the coating and the tape and the sealants as needed, you can actually create total continuity of water control. So any water that hits this surface can only drain down and away. The thing that usually trips people up is when they get to the top of the wall. If you're using this exterior panel for your air control, how do you transition that to the inside of the house? And that's where monopoly framing comes in. Monopoly framing, or perfect wall as it's also uh, more commonly known, is typically where we talk about not having our roof structure extend out over our top plate, but keeping those rafters cut tight, sheathing up the wall to close those off, and then going over the top of that edge with your tape and taping the exterior roof sheathing to complete that air and water control. And I love that strategy. I think that's brilliant. We're a huge fan of making that simple connection of wall to roof, exterior air and water control. But by having that monopoly frame condition where the exterior sheathing on both the wall and roof are our air and water control, taping that seam, we invite a problem. Because if we went ahead in this market, we use a lot of composition shingle. If we went ahead and nailed to that roof sheathing, the first re-roof, we've compromised the entire air and water control strategy. We now have 60, 80,000 nail holes that are openings, and that's gonna be a failure in the continuity of our system. So what we like, what we favor, is two roofs. So we have our 5.8 Sienna panel on top of this under roof structure, and now we've added a secondary structure on top of that, in this case a two by six over framing with a 716 zip panel on top of that, which is then taped. So that secondary roof has a really important function in protecting, in this case, a vapor open insulation product that's underneath it or between the two layers of roofing. So we're getting continuous exterior insulation, just like we get out of our Zip R panel, but in this two by six cavity with an insulation product between those two. So we're adding our value above the structural roof. And then we're adding almost a sacrificial layer for nailing where any type of roofing that's applied to this can be redone many times over the life of the home. And at no point does it ever impact our control layers. So that's 
why we favor the two roof method. It allows us to complete that air and water control in a completely safe manner over the life of the house. Now from here, our next phase is going to be preparing the house for additional durability by introducing a rain screen. Now it's a zip system product as well. It's basically a, an entangled mesh on the back of a long fibrous uh, black fabric that will keep you know, mortar droppings or anything else from integrating into that. And to get to the point that we can put that in, Joe and I need to finish up these rough openings. So we'll go ahead and roll out our zip tape and get that going now. And then we'll install some rain screen and show you how that works as well. So we're prepping out our rough opening. Obviously we wanna to cut to the right size, and then we wanna start with a really robust sill pan. We utilize the stretch tape for that. Huber Systems uh, Zip Stretch Tape allows you to do complex geometries without a lot of weird folds and multiple pieces of tape. We can just lay out our tape, go over the edge and stretch it out, uh, which I can show you right over here because we're already at that point. And with the legs running up the side, we're in a great position then to lap over the top of it with the regular flashing tape. Notice the split backer. We were able to place and position our interior pan and still have this other piece of backer so that we didn't have to do it all at once, which is when things usually get challenging. The stretchy mechanism here allows for us to make that watertight connection in one piece so I don't have a bunch of butterflies or weird cuts there. And then we want to take care of any fish mouths because they are potential weakness. So I want to press out any of those air bubbles because they can be a path for water or air to get back in. Now, because I hadn't previously taped this and we're not quite long enough to go over that, I'll use a secondary piece of tape to make sure that we have really good continuity from our mud sill. But ordinarily we would have already taped our mud sill and our bottom of wall condition. It's just that it's a little bit wet today, so I was gonna hold off on that. So I'll do a secondary counter flash over that. And that's one of the nice things about the Huber tapes are, they are potentially self-terminating. Now they do have a release on the non-backed uh, tapes. So if you have a, a backer on the tape, it is not coated in a release agent, but their regular flashing tape does have a release agent. So when we go over this, we'll use a little acetone to remove that release agent so that we can utilize the self-terminating function of that. They make tapes in different widths. This is obviously their 10 inch stretch, but you can see that the opening that Joe prepped out, uh, just to show a different option, he utilized the smaller profiles and they offer a lot of different widths depending on the thickness of your wall assembly. Obviously the 10 inch is perfect for a zip R6 over a two by six wall. So you'll notice that Joe went ahead and prepared the upper corners with that same stretch tape, just to scrap the articulation and stretch of that across that inside to outside face out of one piece is a huge benefit. What we're about to do is to utilize the regular flashing tape to make continuous our interior air control to our exterior. So we're just taping across the zip R, uh, across the foam backer, into the face of the panel so we get to that integrated membrane and then bringing it in so that when we install our doors and windows, we can make up our sealant joint or tape that for continuity. But just to note, all of these are pressure sensitive adhesives. You wanna explain what that means, Joe? It means you have to use pressure. And that's why you have the roller with disease. And that's how we can check our job sites is we'll walk around and actually inspect for disease on the tape. Yeah. It's also important that your surface is clean. So Very important. we go through processes of not letting guys walk on the sheeting. Um, our framer definitely knows better than that, but you see it on job sites. And if you're trying to roll that tape over a dirty substrate, it's not gonna work as well. So I don't need to go way across the face because I'm about to put another layer on after we put the door in. I'm just trying to make 
continuous from inside to outside with this action. And this is where it's nice to work as a team because you can streamline your process. Most important thing there is to not cut into the stretch tape below. So having prepped out our opening with our flashing tape, our stretch tape, and any openings that need addressed, having installed the flashing tape and rolled it, we're actually ready to take on water and we have continuity of air control. And if you think about it, when it rains, you get water sheeting down the walls. And you can see that for our panel system with the flashing tape, it just rolls right off. But now imagine that you took, I don't know, clapboard siding or a sheet good of some type to make up your exterior cladding and you adhered it to the panel with nails. Well, every time the water hits those boards, that's a dam. And every time it is held in suspension between this sheathing and that cladding, that's an opportunity for the water to work against your integral membrane. And if it reaches the nails, it could even work into your substrate. So we've got a solution for that. Enter the Zip System rain screen fabric. Now, all a rain screen is, is a drainable cavity that allows the water to get down and away. And you can see that what Zip has designed here is an entangled mesh that stands off about a quarter inch from the fabric. And that quarter of an inch space will allow any of that water that was sheeting down the panel to still find its way down and out even after the cladding is nailed over it. Let's install it and we'll show you how it works. So Joe and I went ahead and nailed up a couple of rows of this Zip System rain screen so that we could show you how it works. Ordinarily, we would typically put our rain screen up after our doors and windows are in, but our doors haven't arrived yet. So the reason I bring that up is if your windows and doors are inset, then your rain screen can just run up flush to the edge. However, if you're going to overlay any trims on top of that rain screen, you really wanna understand those details and work through them because what you don't wanna do is have a great drainage cavity that runs right into an opening. So ordinarily, if we had a window in, we would make sure that our flashing was taped back to our WRB, and then our rain screen could overlay that, and then you could put your trim over that. But it's important to understand how that interface is gonna work. Typically, what I see is the trim, then the flashing above that head trim, and the rain screen terminates above that. But water management is all about top-down drainage and drying. So with our two roofs overhead, our walls taped, and now a drainage cavity accomplished by the entangled mesh of the Zip System rain screen, we can allow for that water to move down between the integral WRB and our cladding unencumbered by stopping points like wood siding, stucco, whatever it might be, your cladding might be that's pressed against that integral membrane, now has a free drainage path to go out of the system. So as you can see, it's uh, all about the family of products. The Zip system is not just one panel, it's a system of flashing tapes and sealants and other panels and rain screens. And it's all about those assemblies working together to create that really robust air and water control. And then through our design of a secondary over roof and our rain screen, we're essentially uncoupling or decoupling those claddings and roofing materials that could potentially break those control layers. Yeah, and as the builders, I get a peace of mind knowing that we're just sticking with one family of products. They all work together, the warranty is intact if you follow the guidelines, and it's just a good system for us. That's right. If you need more information about product installation or if you want to watch more videos like this that show you how to get this done right, you can go to huberwood.com. You could actually reach out to your local rep. They do fantastic dealer support. If you need these products or if you need help installing, reach out get connected 
and uh, get your job done right, like this one here. Thanks for your sponsorship, Huber, and thanks for building such great products that make our jobs easier.